So recently I've been doing a deep dive on what is new in the world of scar care. We've actually made a lot of progress in the past few years in understanding better what causes scars. And actually this new science is causing me to completely change what I recommend for scar care for my patients. My previous recommendations for many years have been the three S's and two of those we're going to stick with. Uh, the first S is sun. Stay out of the sun. We know that tanning a scar early will discolor it uh, sometimes permanently and leads to a lower quality scar. So that stands. We definitely want to protect our scar, especially in the first year after surgery. The second S is silicone and that one still persists. I always say if you want to spend your money on scar care treatment, Treatment, something with silicone is going to be the best. It turns out it's not silicone itself that is doing all the good, but any sort of gel barrier on top of the scar. Now, the third S that myself and plastic surgeons have been recommending forever is scar massage. Typically, I would tell my patients to start doing circular motions over the scar at around six weeks. Well, first of all, it turns out that in meta-analysis or the highest form of data collection that we have, scar massage really doesn't seem to do much, number one. Number two, and a little bit scarily, we understand that this inflammation that causes scars to be worse is can be worsened with movement and stretch throughout the scar, so we may even be causing harm. So scar massage is so out. So what do I recommend in light of these new scientific advancements in the world of scar care? So I'm going to change from the three S's to the four S's instead. And so we're going to stick with sun protection, super important. We're going to stick with silicone, but you can use other types of gels such as hydrocolloid. It's not the silicone itself that's doing the good, but whatever sort of moisture barrier we're putting on top of that scar, we don't really understand it too well, but it does definitely help. Next, for our third S, we're going to take out scar massage and replace it with scar rest. It seems to be, and we have been preaching this for quite some time, saying that there's no science behind it, but now we seem to have the science, that the less stretch and movement we put in through the scar in the first few months, the better uh, for its healing. And so I recommend all my patients not raise their arms over their head too much for the first six months. Easier said than done, but you can opt, for example, not to do climbing if you're a rock climber or to not do overhead workouts if that's part of your usual routine. S number four is new and that's steroids. We now understand that the reason you get those raised ropey scars is because of inflammation that's abnormal at the level of the reticular dermis. And so we know that steroids effectively reduce inflammation and that's why they work. Typically, steroids are given through shots. Unfortunately, they are painful. You have to go to your doctor and typically re repeat a course of them every six weeks. The good news is there's some nice tapes that are becoming available. We don't have the most effective ones yet in the United States, but stay tuned for that. But steroids, if you are developing hypertrophic scars, are a very good treatment.